Hello everyone, welcome back to Retaking the Nation. I suggest hitting the like button down below, subscribing to the channel, and then hitting the bell so you know when we upload more content. We got a lot of good stuff coming. You're not going to want to miss out. So over this last weekend was the event CPAC. It's the conservative convention that happens every year. It's a little more of a grassroots uh, you know, conservative convention. And there's a lot of speakers that show up. There's a lot of policy discussed, a lot of people um, to meet, and they do a lot of meet and greets and things like that. Um, and so it's a big event every year, and the speeches that occur are definitely going to be some of the driving forces in terms of policies for the Republican Party and conservatism in general. And so, of course, Donald Trump was going to be there. And so we're going to talk about broadly some of Donald Trump's new policy proposals he put out on Friday, which is a lot of great stuff. I'm going to talk about why. Uh, some of the excerpts from a speech and even the straw poll from CPAC, which some people are kind of already coping about um, and trying to explain why DeSantis do, didn't do as well uh, in the straw poll. So first off, we need some background. We're going to talk about um, some of the policy proposals that have come up for Trump. And so this one is the five point plan that Trump proposes a bold national vision for America. And so he has a couple things here. Some of them are more just attention getting, in my opinion, and some are actually going to be really, really good um, and really beneficial for the country. And I think are things that he needs to start discussing and the rhetoric he needs to start using if he wants to win in 2024. We're starting to see him slowly return to form. As you saw, a lot of people uh, like us on, on the internet and the conservative space voice our opinions about Trump's campaign launch in December and January and how we weren't too enthused by it. It wasn't that great. He was launching NFTs, not really talking about policy making sort of weird attacks and points, still talking about 2020. And we said, hey, we need to have Trump focus on what needs to be uh, done in this country and attacking, of course, the awful uh, Biden administration. And it seems that obviously he probably didn't listen to specifically me, but just collectively as a whole, it seems he has listened to a lot of these people and he's proposing a lot of great new uh, populist policies here. So let's go over this plan. Number one is use federal lands to build new cities. He's calling these freedom cities. Essentially, there's going to be some sort of a contest to design these freedom cities. Um, and just overall, I think the point of this one is to find a way to not make these uh, blue cities absolute hellholes like they are now, where there's just tons of crime and murder, cost of living is insane, and be able to revitalize these to an extent. And the Republican Party uh, kind of has a, as a whole has surrendered these uh, cities and inner city areas completely to the left. And then we had someone like Lee Zeldin actually go out there and campaign in these deep blue areas and actually do well there because he was able to articulate his policy positions and how conservatism could actually benefit these people as opposed to completely ignoring them and just demonizing them completely. Now, of course, there's a large share of the voters in these areas that are never going to vote Republican. They're not conservative. They don't really care. But I think there's some voters who they live in such a blue area, they've just evolved to the societal group think. And then maybe when they're finally exposed to some different ideas, we kind of saw this in actually in California, New York, and some inner city areas, and it looks like Chicago might actually turn things around a bit when they're exposed to these ideas and a Republican candidate doesn't just cave on every issue. And Lee Zeldin actually had an amazing uh, clip from CPAC that I'll probably post as a short uh, soon talking about that, where you don't go and cave to these issues, but you articulate why your policies are better, make some emotional arguments, and then these people are able to uh, turn out for you and actually have a reason to vote for you uh, as opposed to what we've been doing before. So I do like this strategy. I don't know if this federal land to build new cities is ever actually going to happen or if it's more just an emphasis. Uh, we're going to have to find out. Number two, this is the, probably just the attention getting one. Developing flying cars, I don't actually really care about this. Um, but Trump typically uses this strategy just to gain traction and to gain some attention for his policy proposals. He'll often throw something in that's kind of ridiculous just to get people to pay attention. I don't really think this is really meaningful uh, to any extent here. And number three is revitalize rural industries. I absolutely love that. We know that a lot of the rural areas, especially in some of these red states and even in blue states, um, you know, a lot of corporatism is is overcoming these areas and a lot of small businesses are, are dying because of that. And certainly the ridiculous, horrible COVID policies that were put into place absolutely stifled um, some of these small businesses run by local people. Uh, during COVID, we had one of the biggest wealth transfers in history. You don't talk about people on the left, don't really like to discuss that. And wh where are the... Uh, you know, people who are for a more equal economy, where are they when we talk about that? Yeah, they're kind of nowhere to be seen because really they're more authoritarian. Um, but we do need to revitalize these rural industries. And number four, this is the one I'm probably most enthusiastic about is launch a baby boom with bonuses for young parents. This is absolutely incredible. And this is modeling somewhat, I think, 
what we see from the European Large Families Confederation, really Hungary's policy promoted by Viktor Orban, his seven-point family protection action plan, which has reversed their declining birth rate in Hungary. It is finally, it's hit its low, and now it's finally going back up because they're properly incentivizing people to have children and do it the right way. And we see this here in something like this Texas bill, or what they're proposing here in HB 2889, stay married a 10% tax reduction, have two kids, 40% tax reduction, have 10 kids, 100% tax reduction. This is absolutely great. And this is things we need to do. And there are people on Twitter sort of cynically saying, oh, if this proposal was put forward, the wrong kind of people, and this is the phrasing they use, the wrong kind of people would have kids and actually backfire. Not if you implement this properly, um, we would actually create more proper family structures in society, making society more conservative as a whole, because most people on the left um, as a whole, yes, there are some suburban areas that are left, but most of the leftists are don't really have families. They're more single people that live in these urban areas, and conservatives typically have more families and have a greater stake in the societal good long term, which is like it's pretty ironic when leftists talk about how they're so concerned about the climate and the future of the planet when they're not really even willing to have kids to, you know, preserve the society and actually preserve the country, which is pretty interesting to me. So if we're able to properly incentivize this, more conservatives will actually have kids. They'll get more conservative because they have kids and then they'll benefit from that. And it was really interesting because in Hungary's policy, more women actually joined the workforce because they got a reduction on their federal income tax up to 100% if they had four kids and stayed married. And so this is absolutely something we need to do. The Trump campaigns need to implement this properly, hopefully when he wins the presidency. And if it does, it will reverse the birth rate increase the amount of conservatives in the country to combat some of the immigration. And if you pair that with keeping people, um, you know, deporting illegal immigrants and then lowering the amount of legal immigration, you can reverse the trend of the left essentially just importing voters to vote for the policies because it doesn't develop naturally. More families are voting to the right. So the left can't actually do this by just having people agree with them. They have to import people from other countries and then use the school system to indoctrinate the kids that are there. And that's kind of the sad part, but it's what they've been doing because the left doesn't actually procreate on their own. So if you incentivize more people on the right to procreate over time, you'll actually outnumber them and reverse a lot of these trends. And then his fifth point was the beautification campaign, get rid of ugly buildings. I do like this because this does fit into sort of the American aesthetic, the the, the MAGA idea, make America great again, getting rid of this ridiculous architecture that has overcome uh, our society in a lot of areas. This isn't really a primary point for me, but I don't think this is wrong. I do like all this. This is all cultural issues, things that are going to help him win uh, in 2024. And then we've got the straw poll. And Trump won 62% support of the respondents at the annuals of, annual event at CPAC, while Ron DeSantis got 20%, and then Perry Johnson got 5%. Now, I do agree that CPAC is a little more of a you know grassroots uh, convention. You're going to have a little more Trump support, but we are seeing some pretty uh, interesting coping here from some, from some of the uh, people who are more just straight up DeSantis fans or neo never Trumpers. Um, and as they say here, Trump's strong showing at CPAC was somewhat predictable as the annual gathering of conservatives attract many activists from the GOP's MAGA wing. So they're trying to cope with the fact that GOP still has, or that Trump still has a lot of support in the GOP. Well, of course, DeSantis was with the donors in a three-day Club for Growth event in Palm Beach, Florida. And so it's very interesting to see who's backing DeSantis, who's backing Trump, um, and where these people come from and what maybe their agendas are. And so that's a little review of CPAC, uh, some of the things Trump, ha uh, some of the policy proposals Trump has put forward. Um, we might have to cover more aspects of the speech in future videos, but that's just a sum up there. Let me know, what do you think about Trump's uh, plan here, his five-point plan? Um, I definitely think it's there's some it's open for some criticism. There's some things that can be improved. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's a great start, and he's starting to trend in the right direction. So let me know what you think about that, and I'll see you guys in the next video.